The Copper John is an extremely effective nymph pattern, originally developed by John Barr. A prominent characteristic of this pattern is the weight. It sinks very quickly, making it excellent for faster flowing streams, though it can also be fished effectively in a variety of water types. To add more weight and to help center the bead, add some lead wire to the fly and push it up into the bead. Begin your thread behind the lid and make a few passes through the wire to secure it in place, then lay down a thread base ending between the hook point and the barb. The tail is formed from two brown goose biots. Turn one of them over so they naturally curve away from one another. You can then align the tips by sliding your fingers up and down, moving the biots with them. Once the biots are even in length, measure about one half of the shank and tie them in where you left your thread. Be sure to hold the biots so that one lays on either side of the hook. Take a couple of wraps to hold the biots in place, then pinch them together to make sure the tips are still aligned. If you need to make any adjustments, gently slide the biots back and forth until they are even. Take a couple more wraps so they don't move as easily, then cut the biots so they butt up against the lead wire. Secure the biots by moving your thread forward, ending at the lead wire. The abdomen is formed entirely from copper wire. Place a piece of wire on the hook longer than you will need, and after a couple of wraps, pull it until the end also butts up against the lead wire. Secure the wire by moving the thread back to the tail. Now move your thread back up to the thorax, but take your time to fill in any inconsistencies. The copper wire will exaggerate any bumps, so making a smooth underbody is crucial. Begin wrapping the copper wire forward, taking even touching wraps until about the two-thirds point. Using the rotary function on your vise can speed up this step, though I find I get much more consistent wire bodies by not using it. Once you reach the two-thirds point, place a couple of wraps on either side of the copper wire, and either cut or helicopter it off. Mylar tinsel is used to create the flash on the wing case. Place a single piece on top of the hook longer than you will need, and again after a couple of wraps, pull the tinsel back until you have just a small piece left. Fold the small piece back and wrap back with your thread to cover both the long and short end of the tinsel, and with your thread at the copper wire. One variation I make from the original is the use of black scud back. It comes pre-cut, and if you are tying a lot of these at a time, it can really speed up your tying. Tie the scud back in on top of the hook in the same place as the tinsel, so the end butts up close to the bead. Make sure you end with your thread by the copper wire again. Next, grab a couple of pieces of peacock curl, cut the tips so they are aligned, and tie them in with the ends also butted up against the bead. This time, leave your thread behind the bead. Twist the peacock a couple of times so the two strands stay together, and begin building up a thorax. Once you are satisfied with the thorax, tie off the peacock immediately behind the bead, making sure to place wraps on either side to lock it in place. Once secure, cut the hurl off close to the bead. The legs are formed with a single partridge feather. This is another variation from the original, but I like to tie in both sets of legs at the same time. Prepare the feather by pulling most of the fibers back, and cut the stem so the fibers form a V-shape. Pull about 8 to 10 fibers forward into their natural position and strip off everything behind that point. Position the feather in front of the bead so the fibers lie down on either side of the fly. Measure them to be just longer than the thorax, then take a couple of wraps to hold them in place. Make any necessary adjustments so the legs are even, then cut out the ends leaving little butts remaining.
Pull the scud back forward and take a couple of wraps so it stays in place, then repeat this with the mylar tinsel. Once the wing case is formed, pull both materials up and trim them off close to the bead, but leave little stubs remaining. Whip finish in the same spot and cut your thread free. Usually an epoxy is used to cover the wing case, but sometimes I only need to tie a couple at a time, so instead of mixing epoxy, I prefer to just use UV resin. Cover the wing case with a thick resin. Do your best to get it to go over all of the scud back. Since scudback doesn't take resin as well as other materials, make sure you get resin onto the bead, covering the butts of the scudback and the mylar. This will act as an anchor and help the resin to stay attached. Also be sure to get some of the resin onto the copper wire. Again, this will help the resin to stay attached to the fly, and will also create a smoother looking taper between the abdomen and the thorax. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing for more videos like it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I try to respond to all of them. Thanks for watching and tight lines.